Good day, everybody. This is Dr. Sanjay Sanyal, Professor Department Chair. This is the prone cadaver. This is the left side. I'm standing on the left side, and the camera person is also on the left side. So we are going to demonstrate the structures which are crossing the posterior aspect of the ankle joint, as well as the superficial structures on the sole of the foot. This is the left foot. This is the lateral aspect. This is the medial aspect. So let's start off from here. On the medial side, we can see certain tendons and neurovascular structures which are crossing the medial side. Let's take a look at them. The reference point is the tendocalcaneus, which we have already cut. So we shall not focus on that. Let's start with this structure here. This is the tibialis posterior tendon, the strong stout tendon. The next one after that, just posterior to that, is the flexor digitorum longus tendon. Then we have these neurovascular structures. This is the posterior tibial artery and the accompanying venae comitantes and then we have the tibial nerve and then we have the flexor hallucis longus tendon. So these are the structures which are crossing under the tough retinaculum here which is called the flexor retinaculum of the ankle and we have cut that here and we can see the cut margin of the flexor retinaculum and therefore this whole area was converted into an osteofacial tunnel and that is called the tarsal tunnel. Let's take a deeper look at some of these structures. This tibialis posterior tendon, it came from the posterior aspect, deep muscles of the calf. And as it goes inside, it breaks up into multiple slips. The flexor digitorum longus tendon, which is located just next to that, this is the one which supplies the lateral four digits. That also we shall see when we remove these superficial structures. The posterior tibial artery and the venae comitantes, as they go under the flexor retinaculum of the ankle, they divide into a medial plantar and a lateral plantar. Take a close look at the tibial nerve. We can see the tibial nerve, it is broken into three branches. The first branch that we see here, that we have lifted up here, this is the calcaneal branch, the medial calcaneal branch, which supplies a large portion of the skin, the calcaneus. The second one is the lateral plantar nerve. This is the lateral plantar nerve. And the third one that we have lifted up here, this is the medial plantar nerve. The medial plantar nerve, it goes like this and it goes under the abductor hallucis muscle, which we can faintly see here. And then there it can get entrapped to produce what is known as the jogger's foot. And finally, we have the flexor hallucis longus tendon, which makes a groove on the posterior aspect of the bone here. And then it goes under the sustentriculum talli and it goes to the great toe. The tibial nerve can get entrapped under the flexor retinaculum here to produce what is known as tarsal tunnel syndrome. And that will be characterized by severe heel pain. And that is used to differentiate it from the jogger's foot, which I mentioned just a little while back. Now let's come to the lateral aspect of the ankle, on the posterior aspect. We can see these two tendons here. These are the fibularis tendon. The first one, which is arising from higher up, this is the fibularis longus. This was inside an osteofacial tunnel here which we have cut and we can see the cut margin. This is the superior fibular retinaculum. And after that, it goes in a tunnel called the FL tunnel, the fibularis longus tunnel, and it goes deep in the layer four of the sole and it goes to the medial side of the foot. The next muscle after that is this muscle here. This is the tendon of the fibularis brevis, which also went through the same tunnel and it has got another osteofacial tunnel here, which is covered over by the inferior fibular retinaculum. And it continues and we can see the remaining part of the fibularis brevis tendon which I am pulling up here. And you can see I have retained some of the retinaculum here. And it gets inserted onto this bony projection where my thumb is located. This is the tuberosity of the fifth metatarsal bone. Both these muscles are everters of the foot. The fibular, fibularis longus is the most powerful everter. Fibularis brevis is the weaker everter. The fibularis longus and the tibialis posterior which I showed earlier both of them, by virtue of pulling from the lateral directions and medial direction respectively, they also have to maintain the transverse arch of the foot. So that is about the tendons and the neurovascular structures crossing the posterior aspect of the ankle joint on either side of the tendocalcaneus. Now let's come to the sole of the foot itself. We have reflected the skin of the sole of the foot. And you can see it is reflected here and here. The first structure which comes to attention is this triangular v-shaped structure which i'm tracing with my finger now we can see this is got shiny white fibers this is the plantar aponeurosis proximally it is very tough and you can see it and i can feel it it is attached 
to the calcaneus. This is the apex of the V. And as it goes distally, it diverges and it breaks up into five slips. We can see one slip going to the little toe, second slip, third slip, fourth slip, fifth slip. This is characteristic of the anterior aponeurosis and this is similar to the palmar aponeurosis. Only thing is it is much tougher. This plantar aponeurosis is firmly adherent to the skin by means of short stout fibers which we have dissected out very carefully. Distally, it breaks up into a superficial layer and a deep, deep layer. The superficial layer is the one which is tightly adherent to the skin which we have dissected and the deep layer, it becomes continuous with the fibrous flexor sheets of each of the digits. And if you look closely, we notice that when I'm extending traction on the skin, it is pulling on the plantar aponeurosis. And we also can notice some fibers which are going transversely. These are known as the superficial transverse metatarsal ligaments, which hold the slips together. So these are the characteristics of the plantar aponeurosis. To continue with the story, the plantar aponeurosis on its lateral aspect gives a septum, intramuscular septum, which we cannot see in this dissection. It gets attached to the fifth bone, which is here. Similarly, on the medial side, it gives an intermuscular septum, which goes deep inside and gets attached to the first metatarsal bone. So the fifth metatarsal bone here and the first metatarsal bone here. And therefore, it divides the whole sole of the foot into multiple compartments, which I shall mention just now. From the lateral aspect, it gives an aponeurotic expansion which is much thinner and that covers the muscles on the lateral aspect of the sole of the foot, namely the abductor digiti minimi and the flexor digiti minimi brevis. Similarly, on the medial side, it gives an expansion which is a thin one which covers the muscles on the medial side of the sole of the foot and that is the abductor hallucis which I mentioned just a little while back and the flexor. So these are the expansions. That brings me to the various compartments produced by the plantar aponeurosis and these expansions. Just under the plantar aponeurosis is the central compartment, which contains the tendons of the flexor longus. Then we have compartment, the lateral compartment under the lateral expansion, the medial compartment under the medial expansion. Deep down, we have the interosseous compartment. And finally, there's an expansion of fascia on the dorsal aspect, which we cannot see, which is called the dorsal fascia of the foot. And under that is the dorsal compartment of the foot. So therefore, in total, there are five compartments, central, lateral, medial, intraosseous, and dorsal compartment. That brings me to a few quick clinical correlations pertaining to the plantar aponeurosis. The plantar aponeurosis, just like the palmar aponeurosis of the hand, is prone to certain conditions which are known as fibromatosis. And one of that condition is called Lederhose disease, where there are fibrotic contractile nodules on the plantar aponeurosis, which produces shortening. Then we can have something called plantar fasciitis, which is a non-specific inflammation of the plantar aponeurosis. This causes severe foot pain, and it may or may not be associated with an extra bone formation on the undersurface of the calcaneus in the place exactly where my finger is located. And if it is present, then that will cause severe pain when you press down on the heel. That bone is called a calcaneal spur. Depending on the size and the angulation of the spur, different angles have been described in radiological pictures. So that's about the plantar aponeurosis and its clinical applications. Now let's mention what are the functions of this plantar aponeurosis. The plantar aponeurosis is one of the structures which helps to maintain the longitudinal arch of the foot. That's function number one. Secondly, it provides attachment to muscles of the sole of the foot. Thirdly, it gives partial protection to structures deeper in the sole of the foot. Fourthly, it helps to prevent hyperdorsiflexion of the foot. So these are some of the functions of the plantar aponeurosis. So these are the structures which I wanted to mention to you about the structures crossing the posterior aspect of the heel, ankle, on either side of the tendocalcaneus, the superficial structures on the sole of the foot, including the plantar aponeurosis. That's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out. Mr. Solomon is the camera person. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe. Have a nice day.